Hello and welcome to another dramatic reading by me, Anzani84. Today we're continuing to be reading random comics thing and and by ra and by random selection I've chosen to look at the first appearance of Marvel's The Wasp and by extension the origin of Ant Man since that gets covered in it in the original issue Tales to Astonish 44 and it, both origins are given greater emphasis in today's first choice of reading, Avengers Origins Ant-Man and the Wasp, which was published shortly before the 2012 movie came out, and delegated the two out of the Avengers in the public mind site. But, but I digress. As, as these two are still beloved among fans due to their constant appearances in Avengers ad adaptations, uh, and, and so... Uh, and they also have have a fairly consistent and movie trilogy. We've only the third one really being bad. Ads. Oh, anyway, let's get on to the first installment in this. In uh, is it Avengers Origins, Ant Man and the Wasp? Avengers Origins, Ant Man and the Wasp. Do insects dream? We we know that men do, but not women apparently. This man. Henry Pym does. In a dream that occur, occur to Anna, most often he is with his wife Maria, walking along the banks of the canoe they tour into the best oldest neighborhood. He is thinking how stupid he's been to worry about going to Hungary for their honeymoon. Yes, Maria is the This is what happens to those who attempt and to escape us. <laughs> it's a dream, so Henry Pym can do nothing. Um, I'm pretty sure a nightmare on Elm Street would contradict that. He wakes, invariably coated in sweat. No more sleep for Henry Pym tonight. Anyway, it's almost dawn, and he has his presentation today. Before the Committee of Scientific Research and Development, consider the possibilities. Anything can be reduced in size and shift to a fraction of the cost. Food supplies. An entire army could be shrunk down, transported in a single airplane, and returned to normal size behind enemy lines. On the, door, on the downside, this could also lead to the army being defeated comically easily. An army? Are you developing a weapon of war, Dr. Pym? What? No. No, that's just an example. This is a humanitarian Aryan Foundation doctor, we don't fund what or for uh, weapons research. Mr. Chairman, you aren't misunderstanding me. The fact is, Doctor, the audience to it today is a chair that any dollhouse maker could have cobbled together. Have you tested this alleged producing potion on any living thing? The subatomic particle that discovered that I've been suspended as soon as this facility applicates. I'm sorry, Dr. Finn, but your request for additional funding is, is, is approved. I like your gumption, young man. Take whatever you need. Deny again. Oh, damn it. I probably shouldn't have used the army as an example. Tough room? I only need to ask because I think my father's in there now. Or he could be in that other building. I didn't really pay attention when we walked here. Your father? Dr. Vernon Van Dyne, maybe you've heard of him. He's developing a gamma ray beam to pierce space and protect extraterrestrial life on another planet or something. And the purpose of my gamma rays is that they could also be used to construct a powerful bomb capable of changing a man's cellular makeup. A bomb? Are you developing a weapon of war, Dr. Van Dyne? N no, why would you think that? If the last guy developed what was clearly a weapon of war, we're taking no chances. Your funding is denied. I hate to say, but if he's got that kind of imagination and vision, he's doomed in there. Uh, but why don't we discuss it further over dinner tonight? Wow, we're gonna be forthcoming for a man you bumped into on college campus. I'm Janet, by the way. Janet Van Dyke. Do insects feel love? We know this man did once, but now he feels only hate. I'm, I'm sorry, Miss Van Dyne, but I'll be working this evening. Moment of truth, Pim. You'll change the world with your research, with your practicals, Henry. You'll save lives, I know it. 
Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. Almost at the instant of contact. Pim's particles start to act. They get tepid reviews from the New York Times. Good Lord, it worked, it worked. Ha, ah, and much faster on me than it did on any inanimate object. And I wasn't recording any of this. Well, shit, back to the drawing board and the research thing. But, uh, how the hell do I reach my growth center to revert back to normal size? Hank Pym really hasn't written it for how his particles could change the world through. The more pressing question might be, how the hell do you survive, Pym? <coughs> yes, they tried to make a rat sound intimidating. <laughs> Seriously. Chapter 2. A mad dash across the laboratory's floor. Oh, a lucky break. Hey, one of the unlit match I used to light my burners with. How did it end up on the floor? Thank God I never pick up after myself. Oh. Geronimo! Don't finish that sentence, Pim. Pim, Pat, Matt Smith, Doctor, and all the rights. Mo? Oh, ah yes, everyone's favourite stooge. And Bart, Grouchy Bartender. The size of horses? Um, no, you're the size of a mouse. Or oh, a, a smaller than that. Into the jungle like grass. <gasps> pant, pant, pant! What a nightmare, getting further away from. What? Help! <sighs> Apparently he's in hell now, according to the backdrop. Good God, miracle I didn't break my... Oh. Pim remembers the most rudimentary fact from an introductory entomology class he took at ESU. Oh. Ants are social insects, which is why this one specimen is all alone in a cave. Um, hello? You breaks to everyone, Ant. Good boy. Apparently the ant understood him and was just joking before. Chapter 3. Incredible. Oh, the ant, this ant, for whatever reason, has actually helped me get back to my growth formula. As if we have an empathetic bond. Great God, it worked as well as my reducing serum. Well, uh, just let's get to see. That does. And then some. Well, now he's going to have to have to stock on sugar to feed the damn ant. Good boy. Steady. Steady. We'll get you back down normal. Yes? It's Dr. Pym. Me again. And Dan Van Dyne. I got your name and address from the committee, and at the risk of alienating you, I thought I'd try for dinner again. Yes, yes, dinner, fine. I will call you, Miss Van Dyne. Well, do insects have a destiny? Do men? Wow, this is the most profound sounding narration I've ever seen. Chapter 4 Dinner with the Van Dynes, the Rainbow Room. Up until this point, I'd specialized in molecular cell transmission and cell specialization. When you say up to this point, Dr. Pym, you are uh, not your test of branching out. Dad, truly, you promised. Perhaps, Dr. Van Dyne, this afternoon I began to contemplate a radical shift in my focus. All right, fellas, enough soft talk. Is there anyone that things are even resembling a Mrs. Pym in your life, Henry? Janet, father... Wow, it's the most, oh, most frustrating family ever. I, that is, the new direction I'm contemplating is entomology, specifically the communicative abilities of, uh, insects. Good going, Hank. No one will suggest you're trying to deflect. Hmm. Entomology, huh? I can get behind bugs. Uh, I think she might have a fetish. They say an ant can start an avalanche. I may also say that it can stop an avalanche, a and I think I don't really know what the source of this writer is using is. Your antennae are the key dusty, aren't they? You and your little brothers have these sense organs, a nervous system. Can you organize, follow a social structure? I can't believe I got out of the movie, Henry P Henry, what happened? Did your bugs go on strike? Yeah, but if you're refusing to 
It might rock, so I really should fire them. You're just doing fashion damage. Let me ask you, do red and blue complement each other or clash? Hmm, no, that's about the spider guy, not the super god man guy. He looks pretty bad. How much transmitter amplifies my brain? How much transmitter amplifies my brain waves? This code translates my impulse into a series of clicks and to be able to understand. Apparently, ants have a written language that cannot be spoken. Receivers allowed me to hear reciprocal emissions coming from them. The costume protects me from any random bug bites when I shrink down. What about bullet wounds or whatever? The must showcase my physique handsomely. Well, it's a good thing that the guy doing inventing the pin part for what the fuck guy. Into the rabbit hole again. Underground in the anthill. In case you're confused with overground in the rabbit hole. It's working. My helmet is actually registering the electronic impulse that the ants are emitting. Wow. How are you not gonna pass it this technology? <gasps> now or never, let's see how smart I am. Gotta find the correct wavelength. And Henry Pym, hurry, will be swarming over me in seconds, ripping me a piece if I don't, hang on, hang on, I don't to what, you're just standing there, there we go, it's gentle as lambs when you can hear me, I seemed pretty gentle before they could hear me, except for one particular and single-minded worker, oh, so now they ignore the idea of the ants can have their own relationship. Astonishing happens. A tale to astonish me. So it was got used. I think that's what the astonishment used to be dead. So here's the scientist lifts the weird backer over his head. Well, it isn't ants. I don't really see how he could be. Let me do that. I realize it in that moment that the Producing syrup, will it produce in two dimensions of size at least this go around, being something approximating his human sized strength. Now, this is interesting. The other side of a mountain, like a god, good scientist, Ben makes an inventory of what he can do shrink and enlarge, communicate with, and possibly control ants. It's more than he could do two months ago. Of course, he couldn't help but think how proud Maria would have been. Ugh! Ants all over our lunch! I told you I wanted... Anchovies, not ants on this, Henry. Number five. No, Terry, don't. Stop. What, are you suggesting I surrender my chicken salad sandwich to his orders? That would be a solid on sandwich. No, I'm suggesting that these ants are going to what they were born in case they can do. Something like that, yeah. I don't like to take me with my work, but I am not giving up my way. Well, I'm stand all the mission.
had a lot of people before, but then, see what I did there? I don't even keep me around to let me call these people, but I don't know really why. Everybody tells me to get a job, I'm not going to wait for it. Of course, damn it, I had a wife, I had a wife, she was killed. No, a grasshopper man is in Japan. <laughs> Lost Maria, so he's just going in there because he looks like his dead wife. How creepy. Damn it, I need to tell you something. Something no one else in the world knows. I'm. I'm simply in the closet. Henry, I know. You're the ant man. But, uh, no, I'm not. Oh, I guess I was mistaken then. What? How did. The new direction I'm contemplating is towards Entomazi. Also, I watch the news. Help me, Henry. Let me help you. 
and they make you as small as Ant-Man. And the bat size, I can give you wings and antennae. I can, in effect, make you a human wasp. I just need you to understand. I do, and I'll do anything. Except call myself a wasp. I think I should be more like a bee. I am planting synthetic ic, ic specialized cells below your epidermis. When and you reduce to wasp size, wings and antenna will sprout. It feels like it's Later, a joke to a cover of fear. Not what I would have designed, but not bad either. I mean, this is so 1963. Red's out, yellow is in. I think the solution battle neutralized, hopefully, before Mick asked him a thing that killed your father, Janet. My aunt scout is sending me a message via electronic impulses. Something's attacking the George Washington Bridge. Something big and scary. Well, if it's attacking the George Washington Bridge, it must be the Green Goblin about to throw Gwen Stacy or whoever Peter Park is dating off it. Chapter 8. And, well, it's green and certainly Goblin-esque, so I'm saying I was right. It has no name, and it comes from a planet that will eventually be called Cosmos. How eventually? Professor Van Dyne was incorrect in his initial assessment of the thing. It has no true consciousness. This horror from the stars and its only discernible impulses are to conquer and destroy. Professor Webby has no effect on its ever-shifting form. It absorbs bullets and shells, trapping them in its simmering mass. Ass. At the base of the GWB, he got good God, even though I have to a larger bar of neutralizing agents, I need to score a direct hit to have any hope of stopping it. We will go back to my lab. We regroup. Henry, these compartments in my costume. I have an enlarging serum too, don't I? I, hmm, yes, absolutely. But I'll take the neutralizer as well. What? And I'll get you your direct hit. Wasp, Janet, stop! Way to blow her secret identity, Hank. What are you doing? That horrible thing killed my father. I'm not afraid and I'm not letting it get away. All our life, Janet Van Dyne is a woman. Has been a woman in search for herself. How ironic she thinks to have found herself. And the man of her dreams are meant to be killed by some nameless, shapeless monster from space. Ace. Janet, it's Henry. Listen to me carefully. Henry, are you in my head? Yes, I've invented a secret to telepathy and I'm communicating through with you through it. Using my helmet? Yes. Listen to me, don't let that thing touch you. You you get above it. Fly as hard as you can. I I'm trying, Henry. I'm almost there. Good girl. Now take the vial of anti acid and a vial of your enlarging serum. I I have it, Henry. Good. Now smash them together over that thing. I did it, Henry. I did it. Henry! My Fuhrer, I can walk and fly! I love you. Ignore it, thinks Pim. She didn't just say that. Ignore it and pray this lunacy pays off. By some miracle, it does. The enlarging serum mixed with the anti-acid expanding it. So that the liquid comes down on the thing like a canopy of rain. Dissolving it. As easy E. Janet thinks grimly as pouring salt on a garden slug. And her father is avenged. Chapter 9 Fine. For, and do you realize how foolish that was? For God's sake, Jan, you could have been killed. Henry, please. I brought you into this so I could help you. If not, so I would have your blood on my hands. Henry, if this is going to work, uh, if you're going to help me, you're going to need to listen to Henry. My, my father, my father's gone. Finally, she's letting herself feel it. Go like me. Go like me after Maria. Yeah, I'm not really. I'm not sure you've hunted down in the murder of her killers. What do Anson and Ross have in common? I think you feel it too. Love, 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 love is a wonderful thing. Love, 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 love,
After they get married, Harry and Harry make me dance and sing. It makes me dance and sing. You make me feel so happy. Every time we kiss, bluebirds can't. Madsler's Avengers Origin is that man wasp, which uh, it does. You're about to see his modernized version of the story we're about to read. Be a from uh, um, Tales to Astonish number 44, published in 1963, the creature from Cosmos, and um, that's Cosmos with a K because alien planet and whatnot. Ant Man and the Wasp, the creature from Cosmos. Throughout history, there have been men who have become legends and, and men who have possessed powers beyond mortal ken. And in time, these men have become superheroes who thrill the entire world. Or actors, or scientists, or other things. Things like this helpful world. We're about to tell you of such a man. The scientist known to the world as Henry Pym, but known to you as the astonishing Ant-Man. And you will learn here, for the first time, the reason that Henry Pym became the Ant-Man. A past that gnaws him like a cancer of the soul of this man. Giving him no rest, driving him to the strangest adventures any human being has ever known. Find a companion to aid in his solitary fight against justice, tyranny, and crime. I, the companion who will become known as the Wasp, who will be come with us now as Ant Man and the Wasp battle the unhuman thing from beyond space and time, the creature from Cosmos. Plot Stan Lee, script H.C. E. Huntley, art Jack Kirby, inking Don Heck, lettering art Simic. A huge soldier ant clutches Manbo as the Ant-Man dismounts on the windowsill of Henry Pym's laboratory. Right, through his cybernetic helmet, the tiny man sends electronic wave commands to his Himanoptera companions, and the ants far away. You must leave now, my friends. I will call you when there is need again. And now it's time to resume my other identity. Alone in his laboratory, Ant-Man releases his growth gas. And so, Ant-Man becomes the scientist Henry Pym. A man driven to restlessness by bitter memories. But he's still wearing the Ant-Man costume, so I'm guessing he just didn't have a change of clothes handy? He is tired, so very tired. If only he had help. Human help! Fuck the ants, apparently. But it is destiny never to reveal his secret to any other human. But why? I must always be alone. If my fate, if only Maria were here with me by my side. Together we could. But Maria is gone. Make your own shadow of a hedgehog joke. So he sits, this man of science, of legend, as his horns go back to the Hello, Miss Dead, my dear Maria, my lovely wife. Hello, Mr. Pym, my handsome husband. My love, you escaped into a wonderful country. You will not know me now that I am a white American. I am Mrs. Pym now, not Maria Trovaya. My face and voice haven't changed a bit, so oh, I'm pretty sure they won't recognize me with a new name. My love, you escaped into a wonderful country.
have found your wife. There is a note on her party saying that this is what happens to those who attempt to escape from behind the Iron Curtain. Maria? Dead? No, I didn't say she was dead. I just said we found her body. She was still breathing for a few minutes and there seemed to be some surgical scars on her, her abdomen. Abdomen where her womb is. She, no, she, she was so young, so beautiful, so wonderful. No, it can't be. There's more. A message from America. The laborato laboratory in which her father was working blew up. Sabotage is feared. Now we found no body, so we can assume he is just as dead as your wife. The fiends, the merciless murderers, we must make them pay. You hear? We must make them pay. Control yourself. My people will do their best. Do their best. I'll find them. I'll find the ones who did this. I'll make them pay. Maria, I'll find them. I swear it. Wait, Pim, you can. The young scientist went berserk, uh, and within a few days, landed in jail on the verge of mental and physical breakdown. I couldn't find him. I didn't know, didn't know where to look. I've come to happy release, and you'll be sent home, my boy. But so long as you never step foot in Hungary again, even to visit your wife's grave. In his labo laboratory in America, Henry Pym whimpered for terrible tragedy that had marred his life, staring into space, trying to recapture every moment of that wonderful past that was now gone forever. He said something. Maria said something, but I can't remember. Why did this have to happen? Oh, Maria, I... Wait, I remember now. Remember what she said? Go to the end, thou sluggard. No, it was dullard, but I'm, you were suffering from a head injury, so I'll let you off. Yes, she was right. I sit here doing nothing while for, while for world criminals prowl and justice rampant, tyranny tramples the underdog. So I guess the efforts of, of the Fantastic Four have done nothing. So I'll strike back at all... All of it, whatever what, whatever what exists, I am a scientist. I will use my talent and knowledge to find a way. And so alone, he threw himself into his, rose himself into his work, driving away, always to keep a painful past from his mind. A man possessed, a man pussed beyond the limits of scientific reason by memories. That doesn't make any sense. It works. The reducing gas works. My theory is correct. Living cells can be reduced in size by chemical means, and my growth gas will enlarge them again. Then, go to the ants, thou sluggard. It rang in his brain over and over until that fateful day when Henry Pym became the Ant Man. And, and then Giant Man, and then Goliath, and then Yellow Jacket, and Ant Man again, and then the Wasp, and then Ultron, and I digress. The Skyn, S K E I N, I assume that's a word, of memory breaks. And brings our hero back to the present. Yes, I became the ant man, developed clothing of unstable molecules to wear. That means his clothing changes with his powers. The cybernetic helmet, communication with the ants, all this and more. But it's still not enough. Too often have I come close to feet, and suddenly he's in this science gear now. Now, I need a partner, someone to stand by, to carry on if someone I, may I meet, meet defeat and death. But who? Who could I ever trust to know a secret to be ant man? Know my true identity? I guess the story's about to answer this question. I don't know, but some perhaps someday as a final one, and when I do, I must be ready. Work. Yes, I will work. Find a way to equip my apparent to aid in my work. For weeks, the scientist works, taking little nourishment or sleep, never pausing for her memories to come again. Yes, it's true, but so is the wasp we made to specify specialized to grow his legs or wings or antennae. What? But only a life form of miniature size. Wait, what is that noise? Oh, it's the doorbell. Tank doesn't get many visitors, does he? In pace to the interruption, Henry Pym goes to the door. What is it? Ah, you are Henry Pym. I am Dr. Vernon D and Die. You are quite famous, Mr. Pym, so I have come to visit, for we are both scientists and perhaps have much in common. I do have a wife who was murdered by communists for trying to defect. Uh, yes, of course. Come in. This is my daughter, Janet, who I bring with me everywhere for some reason. How do you do, Dr. Pym? <laughs> she... She looks somewhat like Maria. Um, I'm gonna go back and check. Just give me a sec. Not really. <laughs> she, she looks... Uh, Somewhat like Maria, but she's much younger. Not much more than a child. She up to your shoulders. He probably isn't that young. Hmm, he's quite handsome, but scientists are such bores. I prefer the adventurous type, not these dull intellectual bookworms. 
I have a 60 to where you weren't a man unless you stood and stood and punched a man instead of, of wisely running away if he outclassed you. Mr. Pym, I must confess my visit is not merely social. Well, I hope not since you don't seem to know the guy personally. I think perhaps you can help me. I have been perfect working on a gamma ray beam to reach but Pierce space and detect signals from other planets. If there is life out there in the galaxy, perhaps through my beam we can make a contact. I've heard of your work. Doctor, I'm afraid I can't be of help to you. My field is molecular cell transition and cell specialization. Why Dr. Van Dyne came in for help, I don't know. I know, but I thought, you see, the beam needs stemming to each... Uh, but I see you are not interested. I understand, Mr. Pym, each man to his own field. Well, it was a pleasure meeting you. Let's go, Daddy. Yes, yes, of course. Good night, Dr. Pym. It's morning. <laughs> so much like Maria. But you are not such a child. So, Henry Pym returns to his work on specialized cells, pausing only to tune him with his fantastic cybernetic machine to electronic impulse messages from the vast army of, army of ants at Roma City. I have no idea what the hell that tech box is supposed to be saying. Trouble on Temple Street. Please have it well in hand. No need for the ant man. And Dr. Vernon Van Dyne continues with his own experiment. I've got it. Yes, the booster is pushing the rays deep into space. Daddy, I'm going out. Simply there is music and laughter and gaiety. Hey, what? But these three humans do not suspect that soon they will be tangled together in the web of fate as they confront the most awesome menace ever let loose upon our unsuspecting world. Wait for it. Ah, my, my rays are going beyond our own galaxy, leading into the depths of space to other galaxies, other worlds, star, our worlds we cannot even see. And I guess Janice is so bored of this she's not even listening for when it comes, comes in brandy later. What is that? A darkness, a fluidity, flux whirling, coming closer. I don't understand. Something vast, shapeless, yet with form, following down a path rays. It, it's... Oh! The doctor looks the finger that is in the room with him. He senses re his senses reel, his face turns ashen, and everything human within him cries out in agony against this alien thing. Creature so unearthly that it is almost more than human eyes can bear. What? What are you? Malleable. A viscous flowing. A presence that fills the room. Consciousness. Hostility emanating from it like a cloud of snakes. A thing answered in a slipping voice that is no voice that is a touching of the human brain with waves of meaning. And um, what? I am from the planet Cosmos, deep in space. We of Cosmos are a fluid form of life. I escaped down the path of your rays to this, your planet. <laughs> escaped? Yes. I am a criminal. The greatest cosmos has ever seen. Alone, I almost succeed in smashing Cosmosian society, making slaves of them all, but I failed. Now I am safe here. Here I can do what I failed to do on Cosmos. Of course, I must smash your machine to keep any from following me. For my own planet, and I must dispose of you so no one knows of my presence here. Look at me, Earth Man. Look. Luck. Silently, the scientist fights, keeping his head earned from the monster, knowing that to look is to die. Aye, but this alien power of the creature from Cosmos is not to be denied. Van Dyne's head turns slowly, slowly, until it is done. Really? That quickly? Later, Janet returns home. What is that awful mist? Seems to be coming from Daddy's lap. Dad, are you there? Dad? Oh no! I I must get help. I must call somebody. But who? I don't know anyone. Who? Wait, Pim, Henry Pim. He's a scientist too. Dad trusted him, and I have his and I have his number for some reason. Yes, this is Henry Pim, Janet Van Dyne. What? Your father? Oh come now. These poor society playgirls are all alike. But it's pretty gruesome for her to get a kick by making up a horror story about her father. <sighs> what? <laughs> Oh, shouldn't you at least investigate? Lights flashing on the side next board. It means a message is coming from the ant. I have no time to play games with a spoiled brat like Janet Van Dyne. What about your interactions with her made her seem spoiled? What? Van Dyne killed? Then she wasn't acting. It's true. Quick, Henry Pym, release, he, he Pym releases his reducing gas. But this is not a job for Henry Pym. It's a mission for Ant-Man.
I'll send electronic waves through my cybernetic helmet to summon all the engines of the city to meet me at Van Dyne's laboratory. The catapult will get me there to my destination, get me to my destination, hurry. Set these dials. Iron Man triggers the ingenious catapult mechanism and a moment later shoots swiftly through the air before splatting down on the street and dying horribly since the catapult isn't that powerful. The ant will be waiting for me to form a soft platform for me to land on. Good. And now to find out I'm the girl and see what caused Dr. Van Dyne's death. Shouldn't you check on the ants who probably died from you crushing them? There she is, unaware of my presence. Hello, I'm Adman. Have you heard of me? I've come to help you. I have heard of you, but I thought you were only a myth. My father, he's dead in his lab laboratory. There was a strange mist. I came in and found him. He's been murdered. Almost looks like he died of fright. There's something strange, something eerie here. I can sense it. You didn't kill him, did you? <laughs> a machine, I suppose, but his ray machine. It's wrecked. What kind of thing could twist and smash metal this way? Something unearthly of awful menace and terrible powers. Completely alien was here. How do you make that leap in logic? But what and how did he get here? I love my father. He was the finest man on earth. I never showed him how much I loved him. I thought he wasn't sophisticated. Ugh. Ugh, rich girls, am I right? Now I never have the chance, but there's one thing I can do. Avenge him! This is so like Maria. Call it a woman's intuition if you wish, but I know that it was his experiment to reach outer space, communicate with other life forms on other planets. That's what caused his death. Somehow find out, but it takes the rest of my life to do it. She's changed. The fourth flighty shell she wore is gone. She has determination, strength of character. I want to see. Listen to me and ask no questions. Phone the FBI, ask for Lee Kearns and tell him what happened here. Then go to Henry Pym's laboratory immediately. Trust me and do as I tell you. I do trust you, old man. But why do you want me to call? Tell me to go to Henry Pym's laboratory before. <laughs> That's strange. The ants have gone. They're all down below. It's the first time they've ever left me. What did I do wrong? Have I stopped being a good lover? Uh, well, guess I'll have to shimmy down the water by FBI. I want to speak to Lee Kearns. Seconds later. Why you desert me, my friends? Suddenly there's a strange stirring among the ant horde. Mandibles click and the outer skeleton arm of the insects move to self-conscious muscle pull. Then the huge soldier ant send out its message wave. The creature was a Could be a bee or something. Well then, take me back to my laboratory quickly. There you spread and you were spread out, try to find some trace of this creature, and so you'll go to the FBI offices and send me a message of what they find out. Back in his laboratory, and man released his growth gas. And now to wait for Janet's arrival. I must greet her as Henry Pym. Why? Wouldn't Ant Man make your story more immediately believable? Seconds later, Janet at the door. Perhaps I was wrong in asking her to come here to carry out the part I have in mind. Perhaps Dr. Pym, my father, he... I know. I know you want to avenge his death. Are you really serious? Would you risk anything for justice? I must know. Hmm, that seems like a strange request, but okay. I meant what I said. I should dedicate my life to finding his murderer. Coming here, I had time to think. I wish I could help track down all the criminals, the human wolves who prey on innocent people. Honest people, I suppose you think I'm just a foolish female, but... But, uh, come in here, into my laboratory, and shut the door. Oh dear, I'm fitting into wonder if this is a mistake. I'm going to tell you what no one else in the world knows. Oh, in so doing, I put my life in your hands. But I tell you because I need a partner. And I have chosen her. I am the Ant-Man. You? But of course, how else could you have known about... But you said you have chosen a partner? Um, he could have known about it from the fact you called him. Yes, I can make you small as and mount my shrinking gas. New to my research and cell specialization, I can give you wings, antennae, I can make you a human wasp. Yes, and man of a wasp. Can't I pick the name? No. We will find your father's murderer and bring justice to all who need it. What is your answer, Janet Van Dyne? Bear in mind, I'm not giving you a choice considering you're a woman and it's the 60s. Yes, I say yes. Show me and I will... Oh, and I will stand beside you always to avenge my father's death. I swear it. 
Vivi's eosinophilic cells in a microscopic field, they are specialized cells. I can implant them below your skin tissue. It will leave no scar, but when you are reduced to the size of a wasp, you'll grow wings and tiny antenna. Ew. It, it all sounds so unbelievable, so wonderful. Why would you say that when you're seeing it in action? My hair is a tiny centric. How long does it take? Just this long, Janet. The specialized cells are now in place. That was speaking fast, there wasn't even a time, time delay. Meanwhile, at the building that houses Dr. Van Dyne's laboratory, Run, it's an earthquake! Help! Keep back, the building is collapsing. And at the docks nearby a few minutes later, Hey, feel that, Joe? The whole dock's sinking. Seems to be coming from behind us. Look over there. What? What is it? Run! Run! The only way is to get off the docks. And so the world first meets the creature from Cosmos. While Henry Pimper's laboratory, electronic impulse is coming from my amp scout. Janet, in the closet, there's a costume woven from unstable molecules that will expand and shrink as you do. I have a feeling this is our first mission. Okay, but how does he already have a suit prepared for a partner when he only just decided to take one on? And how did he build one to her exact measurements when he just recruited her? Cybernetic units in the machine translate the incoming signals into human speech as Janet Van Dyne dons her new costume. FBI says Van Dyne killed by strange element akin to fear. Entire system ruptured. FBI, police, military called out to fight alien menace. Van Dyne house smashed as well by giant hand. Docks nearby uprooted. Smashed. Uh, alien thing advancing towards George Washington Bridge. George, police clearing Manhattan. Military standing by, ready to fire. Man, means aren't seen fluid in English. This is it, Janet. That is the thing that killed your father. However, somehow your father's space probe machine brought that unearthly menace down to our planet. Here, don this belt. The cylinders contain your reducing and growth gases. Press the bottom button like this. I see. Miraculous vapor engulfs them and the sh they shrink smaller. 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 Oh, it feels so, so weird. You'll get used to it, Janet. And as she shrinks in minuteness, gossamer dainty wings sprout from Janet's shoulders and tiny delicate antenna adorn her head. And more of those things sticking out in previous shots, an art error? Specialized cells, they work. I can hear things through my antenna. That's not really nice things. Voice of the insect world, as I hear them through my cybernetic helmet. Come now, you how you'll try your wings. Shot into space by his catapult, Ant-Man finds his companion close beside him as he flies swiftly through the air. This is exhilarating! Where are we going? The George Washington Bridge. I've ordered the ants to come there. Ant-Man, I think you're wonderful. I want you to know in case the creep eat a kill as it did with my father. I... I'm falling in love with you. After only a... No, you mustn't say that, Janet. You're jinxing it. You only... You're only a child. Let's get this straight. I chose my partner simply because I thought you had a reason, as I have, to fight for mankind. I never want to love again. I'll never fall in love again. Don't tell me what it's all about. I, I couldn't bear it if I had to lose a loved one twice. Surely you have some other relatives you've lost. A mother, a father, a grandmother, a grandfather. So, I'm only a child, am I? Well, Mr. Ant-Man, we shall see. You're still like Maria, her beauty, her spirit. I must be careful lest I do fall in love with her. This is my partner for Wasp. You'll be here to, you'll be to her as you are to me. Because we hate Wasps. Yes, I know. Oh, but your union sucks. You can't do anything about it. It Now, my friends, together we will defeat this strange menace in space. We cannot aid you with bypass the map. This creature, there is something about it that prevents us from approaching it, but we cannot. Suddenly the earth shakes with military batteries open fire. The creature from Cosmos has appeared. Nothing stops it. Cells, bullets mean nothing to it. it it's terrible, formless. I can't look at it. Don't look at it or you're lost. Retreat, pull back, pass the word. Those modern weapons won't stop it. Without the ants, we hardly have a chance. That awful thing killed my father. If you're afraid, I'm not. Wasp flies straight towards the towering soulless monstrosity. Wasp, come back, you fool child, come back. I'll show him I'm not a child. Alien miasmic tentacles lick out the tiny flying figure, reaching formless fog fingers like trickles of doom. But still she flies closer, closer, until he seems to draw it to him.
Desperately, Ant-Man climbs atop the steel girders. If he has that kind of power, why does he need the ant? Don't look at the thing. I turn your head. I'm coming. I can't help myself. I'm being drawn towards him. Hurling himself into space, Ant-Man seizes the wasp's hand, his weight carrying her down away from the creeps from Cosmos. Got you. Don't you try anything like that again. I didn't say I was quitting. I just got to find a way to fight that thing. I think I found it now. Got to rush back to the laboratory. I missed what the ant said. It all adds up. This creature is not made as we are. It is an acid species, composed mainly of formic acid. Moments later, in Henry Pym's lab... Wow, those ants work fast. On the cell from the closet, you'll find a 12-gauge shotgun and some shells. My grandma went crazy in her twilight years. Bring them here and empty out the cells. Yes, sir, boss man. And I'm not paying you <laughs> at all, no matter how much you suck me up. Man uses formic acid as a dye. Many old doctors distill the acid from ants and a man man uses an oxa oxalic base. And the antidote? Yes, here it is. Help me fill these cells. Hurry, what is this stuff? Can't you tell? It's obviously shredded wheat. The antidote to formic acid. Certain species of ant use the acid to sting and kill enemies. We are filling these cells with the antidote. And Janet? Yes? Clearly, my thinking is right. If it isn't, this could very well be the end of our world, the end of mankind, you know. Now we must become Ant Man and the Wasp again. Are you ready? You know I am. I mean, otherwise, I wouldn't be still wearing the suit. And so. But now, how can we carry the rifle on the cells? My friend, the ants shall do that for us. These being the same ants who ran away from the creature last time. Ant Man sent out signals to the ants. Carry those, you must hurry. Where is Bailey now? Wall Street. Nothing stopped him. Every weapon has failed. So the strange possession begins its march. The fate of mankind rests on the tiny shoulders ha, of Adman and the Wasp. Nice of him to label the box shells so the ants knew what to carry. There it is a ahead. Now I hexapoda friends. I do not ask you to fight the creature. Just obey my commands and you will only take a passive part of this. Up the building here, to the roof. But that man, what? Quiet, girl, I've got to think this out. Out. But how can you load it? Pull the trigger. Everything is so huge. You'll find, as I have, but very reduced in size, you still retain much of the strength of full grown humans. See? And now stand by over the show, it's ready for me to load. Here it comes, oh, the loathsome thing. That man pulls the trigger as the ants absorb the recoil, somehow, and the blast and charge go a fervent prayer. Boom! Nothing happened. It's still advancing. Don't look at it. Boom! Suddenly, a horrible mist fills the air. A boundless screaming vibe radiant to nothingness. It, it starts. It seems to be falling apart. Waving sections are blotting out. But we don't get to see that. It worked, and your antidote works. Isn't the thing we're finding the antidote? Like rotting dentals of some evil, alien plan, the creature falls, writhing, vanishing as the formic acid antidote charges enter the noxious substance that was the alien being of the creature from Cosmos. It, it's vanishing, it's fading away. Yes, we've won, we've won! Uh, we, we better get back to the lab, and from now on you must not display such emotion. It, it isn't proper. He's blushing and pretending that he didn't feel any emotion at all. I mean, he's a man. He's supposed to not show emotions. Men don't cry, damn it. It's the 60s. Once again, normal sight Henry Pym puts in a call to the FBI on a telephone with a scramble so the call cannot be traced. Hello, Lee Kearns. This would be Ant-Man. Menace is over. People can be brought back to their homes and building can resume. Ant-Man, listen. I want to meet you. Talk to you. We're both fighting the same things. We can help each other. Look, you can't keep going alone. I'm not going alone, Kearns. Not anymore. Not again. Did Kearns not see the news? We've had no photos of the Ant-Man with a new partner? No, my darling. I'll always be beside you. Until the divorce. Awesome the jail thing in the time he became Ultron. And someday I'll make you realize that you love me as I love you. Who, who by causing you to have a psychotic break and becoming a, a wasp dream supervillain. But until that day comes, it'll be us as you want, be as you want it, just partners. The Ant-Man and the Wasp fighting side by side. The end. And so that was a creature from Cosmos, and like I said, the 
and the Avengers Origins is basically that story retold and made more realistic since in, some, in the original story, the whole romance angle plays out quicker than a Disney princess romance in the 50s, which is saying something, <laughs> probably. He put it, it is suitably epic for, epic for a double-length feature, with an alien monster being fairly outside context enough to warrant a new character. You know, all she contributes is loading a gun, which the, the ants could have provided, let's be honest. Oh, it's been, Origins issue was a bit more... The game made her a bit agile, a bit more proactive. Ever and jokes aside, I really do l like this pet and combine with something of a duo, mostly due to how funny their reactions are. Anyway, join me next time when I'll probably be looking at something non-Marvel related for my next reading. <laughs>